You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. You, you feel this this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You got to make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Packernet After Dark. We've got some phone calls. Phone lines are lighting up today. So a little, little late, I guess. It's day late. People after the... After the game, I think we're a little exhausted. Needed some time to themselves, but uh, lots of calls to get through. We probably won't get through all of them, would be my guess, because there's a lot, but we'll save some for tomorrow. So if I don't get yours, I didn't skip you, just didn't get there yet. But um, why don't we kick this thing off? Let me see if we got any new callers or any new numbers that I don't recognize. There is an unknown. A little worried about that, but uh, we'll assume that's not a new caller. Let's kick this thing off right with some six-pack daddy. Hey, hey, Ryan. Yeah. This is Six Pack Daddy. Hey, man. Um, I'm I just I'm, I'm out here waiting for my I have a pug yeah. dog, and I'm waiting for him to peer poop. And I just wanted to say that <laughs> um, Nico is my spirit animal. Okay. And I'm excited to hear more from Nico. <laughs> you don't have to air this. But Nico is a special uh, person calling your show. Um, okay, I gotta go by. Yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna air that. Um, I'm happy to hear about your pug, and um, I'm sure Nico will. Did Nico call today? We do have a Nico. I don't know if we're gonna get to him though because he's one of the more recent. But uh, Nico, you've got a big fan, and. Um, you probably already knew that anyways, but uh, that was weird. Let's continue. What's up, Brian? This is hey. Blake's dad. What up, um, Blake's dad? I was just wondering if you saw that uh, that crack block by Alan Lazard sure on Carlos and David. Yep. He uh, looked like he was taking out a little bit of frustration on the guy. Totally just leveled into him, and David did not like it. Right. Um, and then on, a, on another note with Lazard, um, obviously he's – going to be a free agent after this year i'd like to bring him back but i don't want to bring him back as as number one wide receiver money obviously i don't think he's i mean he's not the world's greatest receiver i know he does a lot for the offense like that block for example i'd love to have him around but i'd love it to be uh cost efficient i'm not sure if he's gonna want that uh, let me know your thoughts later well my thought is he's not going to have much choice um he can pretend that he's worth wide receiver one money and start puffing his chest out and say, you're either going to pay me this or I'm walking, but he's going to be walking to the unemployment line. If, if he demands, you know, $25 million a year or whatever, cause that's not going to happen. Um, through what three weeks he has, how many yards? I know he didn't play a week, but that's part of the equation, right? Availability. So in three weeks he has 58 yards. He does have two touchdowns in two games, which is, which is nice. But, um, if you're 58 yards in the first three weeks, we, we can even call it two weeks if you want, but with the remaining weeks, he's on, on pace for 464 yards for the season with the 14 games left. So sub 500 yards is never going to get you big money. So, um, and it's just another one of those things where I don't know that he's more valuable anywhere else than he is here. You know, MVS has a universal skill set. He runs fast in a straight line. Alan Lazard, I mean, it's popularized in a lot of different teams. I'm sure the Lions would love him based on the physicality. 49ers probably covered a, a thing like that. You know, there's there's people that would like the big, physical, tight endy, wide receivery guys. But I would just think he's worth more to us than somewhere else. And we're going to have whatever our wide receiver budget is, we're not spending a bunch on the group, so we can afford to spend a little bit, you know, splurge a little bit based on what he's actually worth. But I think if we want him to stay, he stays. And I'm sure he's got an agent, and the agent will have some uh, understanding of what his actual market is, and they'll be able to figure that out. That would be my guess, but I don't know. Mike, you there? Morning, Ryan. There he is. Hey, Mike. I'm a super fan. What's up? Hey, Ryan. Uh, great win yesterday, like I said yesterday on my call. Yes, sir. Um... But today I'm calling in with a little bit of negativity. Oh, here we go. Uh, a couple things from the game that uh, 
that are, are starting to really eat at me a little bit. All right, let's have First it. First one is, where is Josiah Zaguara? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even remember seeing him in the game. Is, is the guy even on the team anymore? I mean, I think he had, what, nine snaps, ten snaps maybe? I saw on TFF. I mean, I'm not sure what's going on there, but, um, boy, they sure seem to be falling out of favor with him. And then Jair. So, yeah, I, that does seem to be the case. Um, it seems to be similar to the Amari situation where there's kind of two things going on. One is that he's not in a great spot on the roster. You know, with, with Amari, it's sort of Randall's in his spot. Um, kind of. And with Josiah, I mean, you've got Tunyon, who's sort of the top option. You've got Mercedes, who's the blocking guy. And then they've got this Tyler Davis guy that they're massively in love with. And when you look at that, Josiah's role is is what, you know? Um, but then there's also got to be an element of they just don't necessarily think he's a big-time playmaker or he'd be out there instead of Tyler Davis or whatever. So kind of those two things working together. I know PFF graded him out positively not this past week he was relatively low but I think the first two weeks he was quite high not that the Packers necessarily agree or care but um yeah I don't know I mean he's a third round pick so you have to assume he's gonna bust out and I think we should just kind of accept that that's what it is um as far as third round picks go I think Josiah DeGuara is probably my favorite and the least busty that sounded that sounded not how I wanted it to sound so you get what I'm saying, though, right? Like, of all the guys that you look at and you're like, oh, dang. You know, even even Amari, um, although he seems to be fine now, at least as a returner, and by fine, I mean not disastrous, he was a little disastrous at one point. But the, I don't remember ever looking at Josiah and I'd be like, dang it, Josiah, you dummy. That just that doesn't really happen. So, um, but yeah, I don't, I'm kind of the point where I'm, I'm thinking that they're burying him to oblivion. Eric Alexander. I mean, what? He's hurt now again. Yep. Yep. I mean, you know the guy. He drafted him when 2018. Mm-hmm. You know, and and he didn't play at all really last year, and he just seems like we haven't gotten much out of him uh, the last few years. I mean, I know he's, he's a great player, and you know. He's, all these things, but man, it just starts to feel like he's this Lamborghini that got parked in the garage that is real temperamental, you know, and you never want to take it out because you're afraid every time you take it out on the street, uh, something's going to break on it. I mean, it's, it's really starting to frustrate me. Um, you know, he got the bag in the off season and now he's hurt. I mean, and I know players can't help injury, but you know the guy. The guy played throughout the training camp, and, and all the reports were he was shutting everybody down. Nobody could, nobody could, nobody could pass on uh, Gaier and all these things. And then three games in, here we are again, and he's hurt. But anyway, just a little frustrated with those two players. Um, just like to get your thoughts, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think injuries are unbelievably common for most players. I mean, just going through our roster, Alan Lazard, he's been injured already. Um, Christian Watson, injured all through camp, injured again, kind of. Um, Bakhtiari, obviously, major injury issues. Josh Myers didn't play last year and then got injured in this game again. Elton Jenkins, Robert Tunyon, Aaron Jones had very serious injury issues when we first got him. The guy could never finish a season. He played a half a season every season, I guess. Uh, I know A.J. Dillon missed a big chunk in his rookie year. I mean, it, it's, I think it's more common than not. And as far as recurring injuries go, I mean, I don't even know. He missed, he played part of this game. We'll see if he's going to be out for a while or not, or if this is just a one-time deal. I don't know. It's hard to tell, especially with the soft tissue stuff, the, the groin injuries, the hamstring injuries. But otherwise, I mean, it's like he had one major injury. And I know that's, as far as individual games, it's a lot, but it's one injury. And now this is one injury. So he may have had a couple more back there. I don't I don't necessarily remember. But I mean, you think about Devontae, how many games he missed over the years. He was out every year for a couple of weeks. I mean, I, I actually, I got a list here. Randall Cobb went on IR last year. Kylan Hill was on IR. Elton Jenkins went on IR Aaron Jones was out, Kingsley Kiki was out, Dennis Kelly was out, Kevin King was out. 
Uh, Whitney Merciless went on IR. Josh Myers went on IR. Randy Ramsey went on IR. Will Redmond went on IR. Chauncey Rivers went on IR. Vernon Scott missed time. Zadarius Smith missed the season. Uh, Ty Summers was out and then put on IR. Malik Taylor missed about half the season before getting put on IR. Robert Tunyon was on IR. Billy Turner was out for three stretch, three games. Marquez Valdez-Scantling was out for about five games, including being put on IR. And that's not even including the amount of guys that, you know, were injured and either played or, you know, I mean, Chris Barnes, Devondre Campbell, Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary, Jack Heflin. Everybody's hurt, man. You know, the year before, uh, Devontae missed time. D- uh, Montrevious Adams was on IR. Uh, Bakhtiari, that's when he first got put on IR, including being doubtful and out a couple times. James Burgess, Kenny Clark, Josiah DeGuara was out almost the whole year. Uh, again, AJ Dillon missed one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven weeks with uh, COVID. KB and Ento was on IR the whole year. Tyler Irvin missed almost the whole year. Devin Funches missed the whole year. Aaron Jones missed uh, some time. Kingsley Kiki, Kevin King, Christian Kirksey, Tyler Lancaster, Alan Lazard, and uh, Corey Lindsley. Oh, wait, we're not done. Uh, John Lovett, Kamal Martin, Perry Nickerson were all put on IR. Randy Ramsey was out. Will Redman was out. Uh, Vernon Scott was out. Equinemius St. Brown was out. Simon Stepniak was on IR. Jay Sternberger was out. Lane Taylor was out and then put on IR. Patrick Taylor was on IR. Uh, Valdir was out with COVID. Jamal Williams was out with COVID. And then Billy Wynn was put on IR. So, again, I mean, I know some are more obvious or noticeable than others, but you go around the league and, and everything else, it's it's hard to point to Jair specifically and say the guy's got serious injury issues. I mean, I, I don't remember saying his name, aside from obviously being on IR before. You can look at 2019. 2019 doesn't look like Jair was on here at all. Adams was again. Montrevious was again. Again, Bolton, Brown, Burks, Campbell, Green, Malcolm, Johnson, King again, you know, I just on and on and on and on. 2018, Jair was questionable three times, but never missed a game. So I, I don't, I don't think so. But again, compared to pretty much everybody, um, I don't know. I, I don't see any reason. I mean, if this was sort of a recurring, a recurring injury of of something, like if he had hurt, like Bakhtiari, if he had a bad a bum knee and was out for the whole year, and then comes back and then has like a knee injury, that would be concerning. But you know, I think I think he had an injury, and I think he's back now. And, you know, the coach even made a mention of we kind of push these guys too hard, and there's a bunch of injuries now as a result, including Christian Watson, including Sammy Watkins and, and Jair and all this stuff with, with these various assortment of, of injuries and guys' bodies being kind of stressed more than they should be, and now you're seeing injuries starting to crop up. I mean, it stuff stuff like this happens, and it's going to keep happening. And other guys are going to get hurt. Lots of guys are going to get hurt. So very few times do I look at somebody as as being like a real serious injury risk. Obviously, you got your guys like uh, Sammy Watkins, who's like every year. Uh, Kevin King was another guy, although I think the last year or two, he was pretty good. So I guess long story, very long story short, I don't necessarily think he's that guy. I think it's just sucks that he just got back from injury and now he pulled his groin is, is kind of all that is. All right, it's Bramble. Uh, hey. Well, that game went uh tail of two different halves there, huh? Right. <clears throat> Looks like it was gonna be a blowout. Jones fumbled because they dropped Vita Vea in the coverage at the goal line and he got smoked. Yeah, right. Smoked him in, really. Um second half defense held us in it. Um there's some hubbub on the internet right now about Rogers um watching the Jumbotron and it's showing uh, Brady's tablet or something. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> For the last two point conversion after that delay game and then the second delay game. Or the first delay game, then the second delay game. Um, but Rogers apparently saw a play and tipped off the defense. So, not sure if it's true. If you want to look into that for the, uh, Packernet after dark. Um, that's what I'll do yeah, today. I'll call back if I want to. But, <laughs> call back if I want to. And he does in about two minutes. Let me, let me. Let me do the Twitter search because that's kind of the place. There, everybody kind of knows the whole like he saw something on the jumbotron. I thought it was something that he saw during the play that he kind of passed along. But yeah, they are being really weird about 
not wanting to say it. So that would actually make a lot more sense that they like got a peek at his tablet, which would be weird that they're putting that on the, ch- I mean, that Roger's the only one that saw it. Yeah. I can't find anything definitive um, other than people basically doing what you're doing and asserting that that's the situation. Um, but again, that, that does actually make a lot more sense than what I was thinking, which is he just looked up, saw the formation or something kind of saw, you know, because when they, and this is what I thought he meant, but then I thought it was kind of weird that 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 wouldn't really tip you off. But I just thought it was, you know, something about the play they were running. And he went over and said, Hey, it looks like they're trying to do this or whatever. I don't don't know. That's I, that actually makes a lot more sense though. Saying the jumbotron shows things that it shouldn't be showing. Obviously everybody can see the play in the formation anyway. So that wouldn't really even make sense. Didn't that didn't occur to me, but that's got to be what it is, I would think. Huh. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Anyways, thanks for that little insight. I didn't, uh, I never thought of that. What the heck? Oh, there we go. I think we got it. Hey, Ryan. It's Bramble. Nope. nope, nope. That's the same one. Here we go. Hey, Ryan. It's Brian in the end. Hey, um, man. So I just listened to this morning's podcast and see you touched on the whole Rogers thing. So you can skip my last call, which I know you didn't. So right. <laughs> you got it. Um, also, why don't you reply to my text messages anymore, bud? <laughs> I'm sorry if I did anything. All right, I'll call back if I want. Well, I I did respond to his text saying, "Why don't you respond to my text?" Just so we we are clear, this isn't like my actual cell phone. I go to my computer and pull this up, and I go right to the voicemails. And so um, I don't really text with I mean, I can. I can click on text messages and type out messages to people, but this is kind of just like a work thing. You know what I mean? Occasionally, like if I'm on the phone, I want to text my wife, I'll use the text feature on here because then I can multitask. But yeah, it's not like a it's not like a DM kind of situation. You know what I mean? But I, I did respond. Now I can see I have a text here and I'm, oh, it's my wife. Never mind. But anyways, if you're texting me on my voicemail number and I don't respond, sorry, but that's, you know, it's not what it's super for. Anyways. Hello. Hey, Pat. This is uh, Henry. Hey, Henry. I'm out here in Tennessee. Yeah. Not Minnesota. Okay. I'm still staring at a lake, though. Good. Because uh, I can't escape them. (laughs) You from Minnesota, I take it? I thought the Packers did a pretty good job. All right. You don't have to answer my question. It's I fine. think the actually did a fantastic job. But I think it was the interior of the line that was really collapsing when those linebackers just kept coming. Uh, which is why I wanted the Packers to get Tyler Linderbaum in the draft this year. I see. Just saying. Just a thought. All right. Go Paco. Yeah, I uh like I said, when after the playoffs or whatever, when the question came, what is the thing that they can do? And it, it's a tough question to answer because it's like how do you get the team to stop imploding? But I mean, listen, this is the recurring thing with these teams against Tampa and San Francisco and everything else. Every time I go on somebody else's podcast and they're like, How do we stop this team? I said, it's very simple. You win up front. You stop the run, get pressure on Rodgers, and you got a real good shot. Unless, of course, our defense holds you to like four points or whatever. Um, that would be about the only way. But no, I, I I like our guys. But I like them like as a Packer fan, as a guy that says, hey, I'm proud of this journey you've been on. I'm proud of the fact, Runyon, that you're like a sixth round pick and you rose your way up, you know, and you're a pro's pro and the whole nine yards because you're dad and everything and you're doing a good job. You know, I like... Myers in theory, usually we nail these second round pick and the expectation is eventually he's going to be really, really good. Although we have no idea if he's actually going to be any good or not. And Royce was somebody everybody was excited about. I think he was what a fourth round pick and he's got the long hair, which is cool. You know, Yash is considering where he came from. He's doing better. But listen, these are not elite football players. Yash Nyman is not David Bakhtiari. John Runyon is not Josh Sitton. Josh Myers is not Corey Lindsley. Royce Newman is not TJ Lang. And Elton Jenkins right now is not Brian Balaga. And I know we're all, he'll get there. He is that. He just needs to knock the rust off. All right, fine. I get all that. That's fine. We'll leave the tackles alone. The guys on the inside, they're not very good. 
You know, Runyon, again, he shows up as a pass blocker. He's a pretty terrible run blocker. Myers has not really proven to be very super great at kind of anything. And, you know, in a position group that requires everybody to be perfect, again, you look at these run plays and it's like, man, four guys are dominating right now. And you look at how beautiful it is and just everything working together and just the timing and all this stuff just coming together beautifully. But one guy just gets blown up and the whole play's dead. You know, and, and so you, you kind of need five guys that are real good. And if you can get it, though, holy cow, this is, it changes everything. You know, believe me, look at Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. So, yeah, I'm, I was all for offensive line. We didn't really address it. We did get Zach Tom and, and Sean Ryan, but Sean obviously was really struggling, and Zach Tom was pretty good but couldn't quite, you know, win a job. And then when he did get a kind of a tiny start, he sort of got beat up really, really bad. So I don't disagree. I think that would be one of the major upgrades that I'd like to see still going forward. I I like that we keep taking these swings, but, you know, the fact that we take a bunch of fifth, sixth, seventh rounds, I mean, this was third and fourth, but keep taking these mid round to late round swings, obviously a lower percentage hit rate. Not every time. I mean, Josh Myers and Elton Jenkins obviously are recent early picks. The pa- I'm not the Packers under understand the importance of it, right? And you can't say first, second round every single year. Although you're kind of doing that with the defense, but I guess all that to say, I'm I'm with you. I'm happy about Quay. Big fan of Devontae Wyatt. Bigger fan of Christian Watson now than I probably was at any other point, just because I figured at at best he was going to take quite a while to get acclimated. Maybe he will, but I mean, again, the dude is wide open all the time. Um, so I I, I like the group that we got, but I still think we're in that same position where the formula to beat the Packers is still just sitting there. And, you know, there's, there's no one to kind of help us. And yeah, Tyler Linderbaum looks like he's doing a good job. He's contributing to that Baltimore Ravens team. That's just kind of dominating. Um, he had a rough week one, 22 pass blocking grade. He gave up two hurries and all that, but bounced back, gave up one hurry the next week, zero hurries in week three. He had a 70 overall grade. 67 run blocking, 77.7 pass blocking. He's getting better every week. And um, one hurry in the last two weeks is is not terrible. So he's he's a beast of a man. And I think there were probably several pretty good options. Although, of course, there's always bad options also. And if you look at the entire draft class, 24 offensive linemen have taken any amount of snaps. Only one of them is in the 70s, and that's Bernard Raymond. Um, with an 82.2 pass blocking grade, but still not very good at run blocking. There's only two guys, three guys that are any good at run blocking, Tyler Smith, Tyler Lindebaum, and and Nicholas petit Frere. None of them are good at pass blocking. And for the most part, everybody kind of (laughs) sucks. There's nine of the 24 are 60 or higher. Everybody else is lower. And that includes, um, what do we got here? Do, 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 six are uh, sub-50, including guys like Akema Kwanu, who is supposed to be an elite football player, um, Luke Gedeke, who we just faced, Luke Fortner, Evan Neal is the third lowest graded, our buddy Zach Tom, 43.2, and then Joshua Ezuadu or whatever. I don't know who that is, but I don't know. I'm with you. I get it. I would love some offensive line help, but we got what we got. Hey, Ryan, this is Garrett. Hey. I uh, just wanted to give you my hot take and overreaction Love it. for yesterday's uh, game. Let's do it. Uh, first is the overreaction. Yes. Um, the defense. Um, still not impressed because they're not consistent. Okay. They are making plays. They're getting turnovers. Uh, but that run... Run defense is starting to concern me a little bit, uh, starting to pucker in the cotton area a little bit way too much when they come on the field. Um, then for uh, my hot take. Um, hold on. Please hold. So Leonard Fournette had 12 carries for 35 yards, and that was it. That was the whole, that was the whole thing. Aaron Jones had 12 for 36, and we all kind of acknowledge that it was a terrible day for the running backs. A.J. Dillon, 12 for 32. So they were all 12 for 32 for Dillon, 12 for 35 for Fournette, 12 for 36 for Dillon, for Jones. Um, They kind of dominated uh, against the run. I mean, that's that's what, 2.9 yards per attempt? 
if you look at the week by week, we gave up uh, two, two, two run defense, 126 yards week one, 180 week two, and then 34 yards week three. So, I mean, it's your take. I'm just not sure where it's coming from, I guess. I think that... I do understand being nervous when they come out there, but, you know, I think they rewarded you, right? I think. At, uh, going forward, um, I think Lazard is going to end up leading the team in touchdowns. Okay. But he's not going to be anywhere close to leading the team in receptions or targets. Yeah. I think that's going to be end up becoming Dobbs. Yeah, I think will be so. the team's leader in both targets and receptions by the end of the season. Uh, judging by how Watson and uh, looking at everybody else that's having injury issues, uh, it looks like Dobbs is going to end up being the guy. So, uh, last note. I tend to agree, and I understand that's very over uh, overreacty, like you were saying, because um, he had like basically one one kind of prominent week. But I mean, it just makes sense. I, I think he's he's going to be forced into a prominent role because there's nobody else. Um, number one and number two because they recognize the talent. But also, as I said on the podcast tomorrow, he's going to be getting schemed passes that other guys aren't. So not only is he getting as many opportunities as Lazar, so it's it's an even playing field from there, but You've got two factors working in Dobbs' favor. You got one in Lazar's favor, and that's trust. Dobbs is going to be open more, so there's that. And they're also scheming plays directly to Dobbs because of his electricity on the field. So he's going to be getting a lot of these quick routes just to see what you can do after the catch. So yeah, he's going to get more reception and and more yards as a result. And it's not like Lazard is necessarily crushing it. I mean, yeah, he'll get that 21-yard pass or whatever occasionally down the sideline, but Dobbs is going to start hitting on those too because if, you know, we know he can do that as well. We just need a game where it's not Tampa Bay and Rodgers feels pressure constantly and is scared and wants to just get the ball out of his hand immediately. You know, that, that'll, that'll come. Same with Watson. So, yeah, it feels hot takey and overreacty or whatever, but I, I think it also is rational. So there's that. Look, um, concerning the Bears, um, I overheard in the locker room Levy Smith saying to his team, we let the Bears off the hook. We knew who they were, but we let them off the hook. His best Dennis Green yeah, no, impersonation it. It wasn't very good. <laughs> but they definitely let the Bears off the hook. They I did. can't believe it. Have a good one. Have a good one, Ryan. Yeah, I'm just kind of consoling myself with that and the fact that you know I don't want the Bears to have the number one overall pick. So if they can win a lot of these easy ones. In fact, they've got a lot of easy games coming up. Um, I was kind of annoyed going through their schedule in the podcast for tomorrow because it's like, man, they're going to win a bunch of these and it's annoying. And then we're going to have to hear about how great they are. But if they end up getting like the 12th pick being one of the worst team, I mean, they're going to be the third worst team with the 12th pick in the draft. That's awesome. <laughs> Let them draft some stupid pass rusher or offensive guard or tackle or something. I don't, who cares? You know, let them get the, the wide receiver. They'll They'll end up getting their... Garrett Wilson, and, you know, it'll be cool and all aside from the fact that Justin Fields is your quarterback. It'll be fine. Hey, Ryan. Hey. This is Roger calling from North Carolina. Going on? I was going to call last night, but I was just, ah, I was just too jacked up. I, I was an idiot on the <laughs> okay. phone. You wouldn't be able to listen to me. Ah, man, Eden Brady, that's just, that's just the best. And it's going to get better for me because uh, Wednesday I'm flying to Portland, Maine for the weekend. There you go. So I'm going to be in a hotbed of Patriot land and be in a Patriots bar watching the Packers beat the crap out of what's left of Brady's buddies. Yep. That'll be ah, nice. Just the best of times, you know. I had a I had an idea for you. All right. Um, Hit me. I was thinking after listening to the uh, Laughing at the Enemy last week, which I, I have to say – some of the funniest stuff I've heard in a long time. <laughs> it's fun um, doing it. I, I think that at the end of the year, you need to do a best of show. <laughs> and uh, let, I'm, I'm keeping track of some of my favorites. All right, and, uh, good. I think a lot of other guys will too, and maybe we can give you suggestions for a best of. Anyway, buddy, enjoying it. Let's enjoy the ride. Talk to you later. Well, I know one that's going to make it into the best of, and that's going to be my dad coaches high school or my dad refs high school football or whatever. I got a lot of comments on that one. That one was, 
I think he was trying to be ridiculous. I can't tell, but he also had like 15 shots at that point, so he might have been being serious. It's hard to tell when somebody's that in the bag. But um, yeah, man, I'm 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 enjoying it, and it was a great win. And hopefully, we we stomp out the Patriots. I don't really see a reason why we wouldn't, but um, I'm I'm guessing you'll have a good trip out in Portland, Maine. Anyways, why don't we go ahead and take a break right here? I'm not going to do any any stuff. We'll just take a break because I'm tired. We'll be right back. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls. Mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, Ryan's here. Hey. I've had a chance to uh, calm down and from my overreactions. All right. Uh, I am significantly impressed with Watch the fact the that O'Donnell broke a Green Bay record or tied a Green Bay record for the most punts inside the 20 and a half. Uh, that is uh, demonstrating that this special teams is, is coming around. Also demonstrates that we punched, punted a lot, but yeah, definitely. Um, that uh, gives me hope. Um, the fact that Dobbs went eight for eight yep. uh, gives me hope. Considering the drop issues. Um, the fact that in the first half, this team was really clicking and should have had 21 points at least, right. um, in my opinion. Um, that gives me hope against a Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense that still managed to you know, shut them down the second half. Um, I'm just beginning to come around to think that they do have some legit opportunities down the road with teams that uh, are struggling right now, um, be it the Giants, the Jets, um, definitely the Patriots next week with maybe their quarterback being out um, gives me hope. So um, coming around, it just takes a little bit of time for the dust to settle. Uh, I just hate that heart attack pack that comes around and plays. Um, I just my heart just can't take it sometimes, and it just gets me going the wrong direction. So uh, the dust is settled, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next week against the Patriots. Have a good one, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always that part of me that wants to say, you know, we should have had 21, and then the momentum would have said we 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 could have blown out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but you know, you got to take the good with the bad, and you know, as much as we could have blown them out, we also could have been blown out if the first half wasn't like you know was like the second half. But no, that is a good feeling. You know, Tampa Bay has held everybody to uh, sub 20 points, I think, all year, and the fact that we could have had 21 points in the first half. Shows, I think, the the up end potential of the team, but there's just that lack of consistency. And even even here in Matt Lafleur, you know, it's always kind of scary. And I'm sure he's not the only one, but he was talking about how they kept getting shut down, and he's sitting on the sideline, going, "Man, what am I supposed to do? What 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 play am I supposed to call to get us out of this? I don't I don't know what to do." That's not a comfort. I mean, that's not exactly his words, but more or less, it's not a super comforting thing to hear. Like he's just sitting there looking at his playbook, going. I don't know, man. Uh, it's like me playing Madden. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, just uh, do this one. It looks pretty good. I don't know what to do anymore. But they're growing, you know? We've seen a lot from the offense. It's been a lot of different things, and we got to get more consistency and all that, but it's been there. 
seeing the defense show up. You know, they've had some issues, but again, even even through three weeks, they really haven't had a bad week from a point standpoint. And it just seems to be getting better. So just keep it going. That's it. You know, stay healthy, keep growing. And um, I don't know, hopefully this will be a better outcome than previous years, I guess. Hey, Ryan, this is Travis from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Hey, I apologize for leaving out the hometown yesterday. Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. I just had a couple uh, more thoughts today. Um, and I'm sorry if you touched on them in today's episode. I'm at work currently, and I'm uh, going through all the podcasts from last night and today. Um, so you may have addressed these, but I just wanted to put a couple thoughts out there. Um, first off, throughout the game yesterday, man, I kept looking at Christian Watson every time they panned him on the sideline. And I was talking to my girlfriend about him, like, man, I feel so bad for that guy right now. And, I mean, we don't have too much information on what happened with his hamstring, how it all went down, how serious it is, yada, yada. But, I mean, that guy was our second round, essentially first round wide receiver pick. You know, he came in. He was the one full of promise, and, like, yeah, we got Dobbs in the fourth round, and everybody, you know, since training camp started, been super excited about him. But then we get to the week three, and I feel like I think his mom had said something in the interview, but, like, obviously he's going back to his hometown in Tampa, playing in front of his family, and then it gets here, and the guy can't get on the field. And, I mean, I'm not saying that's his fault by any means, but how hard would it have to be? be sitting there on the bench in your hometown, your first year as a player in the NFL, and then you're seeing the rookie who got drafted two rounds after you killing it out there. And, I mean, I know I'm not saying Christian is upset that Romeo had a hell of a game. Obviously, no player is going to think that about another player. Well, they might, but not say it out loud. But, man, that had to be tough to watch. Um, And then a second thought was about Sammy Watkins. So let's pause it there. Um You're right. I actually, I saw there were all kinds of articles out there. Something about, I think he had actually played at Raymond James Stadium, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium as a a kid or teen or whatever, and had made the comment, one day I'll be in the NFL and I'm going to play on this this stadium again. And, you know, this is it. This is the special day. And I remember reading it and being like, we should probably make sure he's playing first. But, but yeah. Then you're right. And then he's on the sideline. And I, I hadn't even thought about the Romeo Dobbs thing, but it's, it's, it's true. You know, I mean, this was a game, especially for, for Watkins, because again, Watts, no, Watson, because Watkins was out. I'll never be able, they need to, we need to get rid of Sammy Watkins. I'm sorry, just because I can't handle having two guys with similar names on the team. But I mean, the deep threat's out. It's your time to shine, son. And then, yeah, you're sitting on the sideline and this was your big game and your family maybe's there. I don't really know, but you see how they feature the rookie, you know, they, they, they need him. They push him to the forefront. He gets eight receptions and makes a lot out of it. And yeah, you could definitely see how he could be sitting there saying that that should have been me. You know, I think the only positive with this whole situation is that it kind of takes some of the pressure off. Imagine if he was a first round pick. I know that the two pick difference shouldn't matter, but it would. Imagine if he was a first round pick and if we hadn't picked up Dobbs, you know how mad everybody would be right now? Everybody be calling him a bust. Look at Drake London. Look at Chris Olave. Look at the other first round picks. Look at Traylon Burks. And where's our guy? We go out and get some bum out of NDSU, and everybody knew we shouldn't have got him. Look at George Pickens. Look at all these other guys. Even second round picks are doing better. We get nothing. He's not even playing. Nah, 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 nah. Nobody really cares. You know, he he's a second round pick, and Dobbs is kind of getting stuff done, and so nobody's freaking out about Watson really. I'm sure there are some people doing it, but but general sentiment, there isn't a ton. So I, I think that would be the one silver lining in all this is just the fact that it takes a little bit of pressure off and he can kind of get acclimated, get out there. And if he makes a big play, it's like, hey, look at that guy making a big play. That's cool. Whereas in the other situation, it's probably like, oh, finally, look who showed up. So we'll take it as it is. Getting put on IR for a hamstring, which once again, nobody really had any information on and it just kind of came up out of nowhere. And then boom, he's out for at least four weeks. Um, I had a random thought about that thinking, what if they don't think the hamstring is that severe, but they know he has an injury history, right? So maybe let's just go ahead and let him fully rest, fully recover, save his body for the second half of the year, you know, four weeks later, that's not really the second half, but close to it, second half of the year. And in the meantime, 
get these rookies that time to develop with AR. I mean, we saw what happened with Dobbs yesterday. That was a pretty big step in their development together. Um, so, yeah, that was just maybe another thought. You know, maybe his hamstring injury wasn't that severe, but they know Sammy has that, you know, trust developed with Rodgers. They saw what they can do together, and they're like, hey, we got this. It's ready. Let's, let's set him on IR for four weeks at least. You know, let him get fully recovered. They'll be back for the end of the year. In the meantime, get these rookies caught up. Maybe they'll have, you know, that, you know, next two or three steps down. And then by the end of the year, we'll have. A- Our buddy Travis just got cut off there at the three minute mark. But um, I'll say this. I would say that's probably not the case would be my assumption. However, I think that's a pretty solid roadmap for us to realize the positive in this situation, right? Allow him time to fully heal. And in the meantime, force the team to feature the rookies who absolutely need to be pushed a little bit. And as we saw, there was a positive result. And, and, you know, there's a big part of me that kind of hopes the Packers see that and learn from it, you know, because they don't like to do that. It would be nice for them to look at that and go, man, we probably should have done that a while ago. And, you know, the next time Watson's on the field, we maybe we should push it a little bit, you know, just a thought. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that was some kind of grandmaster plan or not, but that is sort of the silver lining of the situation, I would say. Hi, Ryan. It's your wife. Hi. I have a couple of questions. Right. What is your favorite restaurant and what is your least favorite restaurant? Um... All right. I think I might know the answer. We'll see if I'm right. All right. I had to read that to see if she was done. Uh, bleh. She knows it. I don't even know it. Favorite restaurant. I'm try- See, I'm just sitting here trying to think what she's thinking. Because I have a thought, but I don't think that would be her thought. What place do I like to go to? I don't even know. If she's thinking McDonald's, I'm going to be very offended. <laughs> because that usually is my vote when the family's trying to pick where we should go. But you know what? The kids want Culver's every time. And I love Culver's. But, dude, every time we go to Culver, I just want some nugs once in a while. You know what I mean? Like, can a guy get some nugs? Dang. I love a Culver's burger. I just, you know, mix it up a little bit. Favorite restaurant? Dang. I know when I was younger, there was a place down in Illinois called Macaroni Grill. That was my favorite. That was, that was the bomb deezy. Um, Benny Hanna was always real solid. That was kind of like a fancy thing we did as kids. Haven't been there in years. I'm trying to think, just thinking back over... Over the years of favorite restaurants. I know also back in Illinois, they had uh, Taco Patio. Just the best. I've never been to a restaurant that had better tacos than Taco Patio. Just never in my life. Super, super, super good tacos. And then right next door to Taco Patio was Hong Kong Restaurant, which was the best Chinese food I've ever had. Illinois had such good food, man. Everything. The, the best pizza place I ever had was right down the street from us. It was basically five places down. Five uh, stores down from the two places I just described to you. And the macaroni grill was maybe like a, I don't know, 10 minute drive from our house. I didn't realize how good the food in Illinois was until I left and got up here. And it's like, eh, I don't know. I do like Rosati's, which is up here, which is a Chicago pizza place. I think if, if you were to just ask me right now, you get to go to any restaurant in the world. You're going tomorrow, anything you want. I'm going to Samba, the Brazilian steakhouse in Madison. I've only been there once, but I mean, it's just, it's all you can eat steak. So I don't don't know. I feel like I'm failing in this answer here. What the heck would, what do you think the answer is? I'm so tempted to pull up Google Maps right now and look at every restaurant in Wisconsin. Oh, you know, it's really good. Cops is really good in Milwaukee. Cops is amazing. I'm not going to say that is my answer though. I'm going to stick with the Brazilian steakhouse. Least favorite restaurant. That's tough because I probably don't go there unless I'm forced to, which could be the case. Oh, you know the answer to this. It's Red Robin. (laughs) I've been to a Red Robin like once. And um, any restaurant that overcooks a burger is the worst in the world. And I've I've only been to a handful. But there are those places, they'll they'll give you like a well-done burger. And then they give you a bun that's like really big and like a hard bun. That is the dumbest thing in the world. It's like a hard, dry bun. Oh, I, I just, I can't handle it. Went to Red Robin, that's what I got. And I've never been back since. So there goes my Red Robin sponsorship. All right. I will uh, confer those answers with you in a minute. What else you got for me? What has surprised you the most about the Packers so far this year? What has surprised me the most about the Packers so far? Well, there's the special teams, I guess, is surprising because I had low expectations. 
Maybe it's the lack of drop off from anybody that I thought would drop off. Now, to be clear, I did look at it. Rashawn Gary's grades, as far as grades go, plummeted. He's kind of back to what he was the year prior. He's at like a 69 overall grade or whatever, which kind of makes me nervous because, again, the stats are fine, but the grades are sort of indicating that there's an underlying problem and the stats will usually follow that. But everything I'm watching is Rashawn just destroying everybody. So I'm kind of just trusting what I'm seeing and the stats and everything else and ignoring the rest. But Jair looks great. Rashawn, I thought, would regress. He didn't. Devondre, I thought, would regress. I don't think he has. I mean, he has, but not not in any noticeable way. Mazul, same thing. Preston, same thing. They are all playing better than I expected. So I will go with that as the answer. If you were GM, what changes would you make? And what is Princess Diana's wedding dress valued at? (laughs) Wait a minute. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and separate those two. Uh, if you were a GM, what changes would you make? Ooh, at this point in the season, that's that's I'm, you're going to get me in some trouble here. Um, where do we need a little help? It's not wide receiver. It's not offensive line. I know I complained about it, but we got enough pieces that I don't think we're going to get anyone that's massively impactful. Probably not tight end. That's a pretty tight knit group. Running back is fine. I would possibly be looking into a safety. I know it's kind of a, it's not really the right time or whatever, but um, Amos is not necessarily playing at a world beater level. And Savage is one of the worst safeties in football right now. Really struggling, has not picked up the pace since last year. Kind of concerned that that was just kind of a swing and a miss with Darnell Savage. And beyond that, we just have no depth whatsoever. So um, I mean, we're instantly looking at special teamers. We got Dallin Levitt, Tariq Carpenter, and Rudy Ford as safeties. So, yeah, maybe, I don't know what's out there, but just poke around, see if maybe there's an option if I had to. I mean, I I probably wouldn't do that, but if you're asking me to do something, I'm the GM and I have to do something, that would be the thing that I would maybe do. You know what I should have said, darn it? I should have just said, like, pay Rashawn Gary. Here I am, like, trashing players, and I could have just taken the obvious easy ones. What is Princess Diana's wedding dress valued at? Uh, millions? Uh, it's one of those things where you say something like you always sound stupid no matter what unless you get lucky and nail it you know you'd be like 48 million dollars and it's like oh no it's like 250,000 I go dang it or you say like a million it's like uh 300 million or what are you talking about (sighs) 2.4 million dollars I'm gonna google it right now princess diana's wedding dress I'm guessing it's in the news that's why you asked see it's 115,000 dollars what that's a little that seems low I knew I was going to either be like really high on this or or really, I figured it wouldn't be low, but usually these things don't go for that much. But Princess Diana's, I mean, the wedding dress itself looks like it's about $115,000. It hasn't grown in value because it's Princess Diana's dress. That thing is like, it's like 45 feet long. Also, Princess Diana was inside of it. So I figured that would increase the value a little bit, but all right, I failed. I lose. I'm stupid. I don't know. What else you got for me? I will tell you the answer later. We'll see if you're right, if you guess, when you guess it on this show. Okay, bye. Have fun. Sorry, I'm going to ruin that one. Uh, I believe this is Riley Grace. Hi, Dad. This is your daughter. I'm Riley. Hi. Um, who do you think is going to win in the NFL? Hmm. Um, and... This is a hard one. Who is your favorite um, Packer person? Bye. I love you. (laughs) Uh, All right. That was my daughter, Riley. Who's going to win in the NFL? It's actually a pretty good question considering I'm sitting here floundering. We'll, We'll just assume we're talking Super Bowl right now. Um, if you had to pick a Super Bowl winner, the bets are on the Bills, I'm sure, but they probably were last year too. And I don't know. They might just be one of those teams that kind of struggles to get it done in the playoffs. You know, if you're a kind of a up and down team, you blow teams out of the water and then you lose to a team and score like 20 points or something. <sighs> I still think Tampa's probably in the running, but they got to get the offense figured out. The Chiefs are in the running, but I think they're 
declining since they won their Super Bowl, so that doesn't put them in a super high spot. Tell you what, it would be pretty ridiculous if it was like Jaguars, Eagles. I know I'm supposed to say Packers, but I'm just thinking here. I mean, if I had, uh, just based on where we're at, what, what, Dolphins, Eagles? Baltimore's another team, but again, I don't know that I trust them for sustained success. You got to have the defense. Really helps to have a solid offense, especially with quarterback, and consistency is pretty important. I don't know about Tua. I don't know about Lamar, but they both can certainly put up points, and they have the firepower. Well, points for Baltimore, firepower for Miami. I don't know. I'll just say Packers. And then my favorite Packer person has, the answer has always been Brett Favre, but I don't think I'm allowed to say that anymore. So uh, let's go with Aaron Rodgers. Next man up. Got that next man up mentality, you know. Thanks for calling, Riley Grace. Love you too. Fine, Slip. This is the ghost of Paul running here. I like what you're doing down there on that Packers podcast. Did you say the ghost of Paul? I didn't. I didn't catch that. Podnet show of yours. Thank you. The Packers Podnet show. <laughs> yeah. Good name. I gotta give it to you. It's a good one. I anyway, I used to up. do a little broadcasting. Not sure if you're aware. I'm and not. I thought I'd call your machine and give you my Packers insights. All right, thanks. By the way, I appreciate you using 1980s technology for me to facilitate my segment on your show. You're so, welcome. Here we go. Pitch and catch. Alan Lu- <laughs> Did they have Google Voice in 1980? Sorry. Lizard. were chirping in the offseason about the Lizard King being a number one wide receiver. Hell, yeah. even number 12 was crowning him the next Carol Dale. Yep. Here's my insight. He ain't. Okay? He ain't a number one wide receiver. There you he go. wasn't born to be a number one. Got more hits than Twitch, but that's okay. <laughs> when everyone else was doling out Devontae's targets and projecting the number of catches and yards this Iowa gecko was going to get. I was sitting up here sipping on a cocktail. Might have been an alien ball sack, as I recall. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter. I was up here yelling one thing and one thing repeatedly. But Jim, what the Packers and Mr. Shedges skin should hope he becomes is the Gimp from Pulp Fiction. Wow. Now let me explain, Lucy. When Ricky Lizardo reaches his full potential, he'll need to do a few things mm-hmm. and do them consistently well. He's got to be assignment sure and yep. penalty free. Yep. He's got to be a crisp route runner with sure hands. He'll need to catch everything on third down and in the end zone without exception. He'll need to be a relentless blocker and a physical presence. Once he's got that down, you add in his gimp like qualities. A <laughs> consummate pain in the to opponents poking, prodding, provoking, grunting, grinning, and grilling. Who knows? Maybe he replaces his mouth guy with a ball gag. Regardless, only then will his eye become the gimp, and I guarantee he'll be everyone's favorite wide receiver number two. All right, Ryan, I need to skedaddle. I'm meeting some boys at the slipper post for happy hour. Prune by seven, balling my cabbage by ten. Don't wait up for me, Ryan. Pitch and catch. I'm at a bit of a loss here, uh, ghost of of Paul. A um, little, I'm a bit of a loss at, at at what to say, but point kind of taken. I think I will say I wish I would have played this call at any point other than right after when my daughter called. But uh, it is what it is. So, all right, let me let me recap this here for a second, if I can. Let's see if I can figure this out. So, um, Lazard isn't a number one. I'm I'm I'm. I'm kind of with you on that there. Pretty unlikely that it materializes. Um, And he needs to be the gimp from Pulp Fiction so that he can be the number two. On top of being perfect in the third downs and stuff, catch every pass and then be the gimp, and then you get to be the number two. Whew. I better get away from this one. I, I'm trying to think of what direction to go here, and they're all bad. They're <laughs> They're all bad. Do I end on this call? I think I'm going to end on this call, man. I'm t- I'm tired. I'm ready to go. Sitting at about an hour here. But we got Nico, Nico, Jake starting off the show for tomorrow. Thank you to all the callers. Um, have to go find out what my wife thinks is my favorite restaurant. And uh, that's about it. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.